All right, so Digital Hub. Uh, that's accessed through scribenet.com, and this is going to be a touchstone for um, QC procedures, and it's going to be a touchstone as your project moves from one phase to another. Not necessarily composition to editorial, but editorial to production, production to ebook, things like that. Um, so uh, we'll go to scribenet.com, click Digital Hub. It'll ask you to sign in. And this is basically how it will look once you're signed in. Uh, you'll have three main options up at the top, start a new project, documentation, which takes you to uh, all the sorts of different tools, uh, conversion settings, things like that. We'll discuss that granularly as we go through the different steps. Um, and then it'll take you to your organization home. For us, that's Scribe. For you guys, it'll be OTN. Uh, over here, there are some online tools. Uh, there's an EPUB rezipper. Um, that means basically, once you're working in the EPUB, if you find you need to do some different edits to it, maybe there's a validation issue you want to track down, you would uh, do that in the individual HTML files, perhaps, and then rezip this so that it can be opened as an EPUB. Uh, and then you have a validator. Uh, this essentially allows you to drag and drop an EPUB eventually and then validate it to make sure there's no issues, make sure there's no, um, that, that is basically good to go. And then you'll have your, your list of projects. So I'm going to start a new project, and this will just be a little, a little tour of what's going on. So when we start a new project, we always want to give it a project code. Uh, for us, it's going to be OTN hyphen, and then I'm going to say OTN test 01. It'll give you the option to fill in different metadata. It's not necessary right now. Right now, I just want to get into the main view so we can see uh, where, the, uh, where the different options are. What you can do with it, but when we talk ebook, we're eventually going to start talking about filling in these different things because all of this metadata about your authors, your subjects, this is stuff that's going to be built into a file called the OPF in your ebook, which is going to allow for searchability, info about the book, things like that. But for now, we're going to go away from project information and we want to go to files. So here's where we're going to start uploading things. Uh, right now, we don't have anything here. And you'll see once we start uploading something, and right there I just clicked on this upload button. Go back. Gotcha. Cool. Okay. Back again. Back to my project here. Okay. Click on upload right over here. So for right now, I'm just going to show you a couple different features. So I am uploading a file right here. I just drag it into this little dotted box and I'm going to click upload. When we upload files, it's going to do a couple different checks to it as well. Um, mostly it's going to check that it conforms to our workflow. So it conforms to the approved styles, um, I would say note counts, things like that. So typically you'll get a green checkbox if everything is correct. It uses all of our styles, note counts match up. Um, there's no validity issues if you're uploading an XML document like a SAM or SCML file. And then we also have a stats panel over here. Stats panel is going to be very helpful when we talk about editing, when we talk about moving from composition to typesetting, because it gives us basic info about the document. Uh, word counts, character counts, a uh, list of elements in the book. So these are some of our styles. You have like A head for A head, um, your level one head. Um, We'll talk about what aft means. It basically means it's a head or other element that follows another structural indicator. So let's say this is an A head after a chapter title. You might want to append aft to that. And also give us counts for how many times these happen. Um, you can see there's a lot of different styles in this document. We'll get to know all these things next week a lot better when we go through the list itself. Uh, you can do different sorts and you can collapse this panel as well. It gives us a list of special characters that appear in the file. Um, sometimes this might not be particularly exciting, like an accented A, that's not super exciting. But if you were to have, um, like Richard's question earlier, if you were to have a lot of Hebrew text or Greek text or Japanese or Arabic, those are all going to show up in the special characters list. And that's important because it helps with the vetting procedure. Um, if I'm a project manager, and let's say I upload that, or maybe I'm a typesetter and I'm about to create a design, I want to convert that document or at least review the style. Seeing things like that kind of helps me plan my approach a little bit better. I start to think about, well, maybe 
this typeface I was going to use that's very specialized and looks kind of neat. Maybe it doesn't have a full character list for things like that. It doesn't have Arabic or it doesn't have Hebrew characters. Now I need to plan my approach and plan my design a little bit more. Um, it lists number of images and then the image names as well. So those are two uh, basic features, checking it and then special characters. Does anyone have so that's one feature of it. it. It uploads, you can upload your file, it'll run checks, and it can give you just basic information about what's contained in the book. Um, additionally, we get back to the main feature of the FAI, which is the conversion feature. So this green bar up here, which is in our OTN test project, this is our conversion bar. It's kind of, have an, you have an input and an output. The number of inputs are determined by the number of different file types that you have. Um, I'll show you real quick what that looks like. If I were to, um, perhaps upload a da, 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 SAM file, perhaps, um, for da, 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 a SAM file, or maybe here, I'll upload an InDesign XML file. It's going to run through those same things for an XML file. It's going to make sure that it's valid. It's going to make sure that it's ready for conversion. Um, if I were to get maybe like a yellow dot here, there's kind of a stoplight system. And that means that there might be a potential issue that you want to check in. If there's a red dot, like maybe your XML file is valid, then it's going to say, I cannot convert this. You need to fix this issue. Um, because this came out of a scribe InDesign file, we wouldn't really expect any issues in that XML file. But mainly I just want to show you that now we have a different type of input because we have a different type of file. And here's the different outputs that we can get from this composed Word file. We can change it to an EPUB 2 or 3. Uh, we can change it to HTML. We can change it to IDPT, which is our typesetting format. Rather than placing a Word document, we place an IDPT format. Um, it can refine the Word document, which is going to be a big topic that we'll discuss next week. That'll be Elvis walking through what that means in composition. Um, or we can go to SAM and SCML. Um, so just for the sake of demonstration, let's say we want to make this into an SCML document or a SAM document. Um, we do that a lot for text checks, for simplifying the process. And additionally, there's different settings. We're going to go through these, uh, not, not right now. We're going to go through these as we're actually doing these steps. But just know that different types of conversions means different types of settings. So, you know, for example, if I'm going from Word to EPUB, it's going to start asking me about, do I want to rebuild the table of contents? Do I want to link the notes, the chapter heads, like back to the, back to the TOC? Am I composing language styles, which would be helpful for those special characters? But just so you know, there's a lot of different options that you have here. Um, all right, questions? I'm just going to show you what a conversion process looks like at this point. No? Okay. So then we'll just say, you know, we're going to convert this Word document to a SAM file. Oh, I'm sorry, Anita. Yeah. Right. Okay. Output define input. Output define input. So Largely, if I'm understanding it correctly, um, the type of file here can kind of go from anything. And Sophie, if you want to know what IBP file is, I'll explain that as well. So, um, I guess my my question. I don't know if you can hear yeah. me. My question is whether whether which one do you select first? Do you select the first oh. input or the output, or does it does it totally vary? Can you do it? Either? So most often, this is just going to be determined by whatever was the most recent um, file type that you uploaded. So um, I don't know if you saw when I uploaded that InDesign XML file, it already preloaded that with InDesign XML. Because it's kind of assuming, like, well, you just uploaded this, you probably want to do something with it. Um, so that's largely what it is. But it's, it's basically just a drop down list. So you can change it to anything. So there's not really I think the only thing that would define it would be what you most recently uploaded, but there's no right. reason why you couldn't. Sorry. Is there, is there anything else in that list besides Word, InDesign, and SAM? Well, this is uh, populated by the files that we have available to us. Okay. So if I uploaded an SCML document, then SCML would be available here. 
um, because um, it's basically saying like, well, this is what you have available to convert. Um, and this is where it can go, which is okay. pretty much the full list of available file types, essentially. So it would be really great to have a list of all of the things that it can handle as, as inputs. Okay. I think that, that might be on our documentation, but I will, but we'll check with on that. Um, if it's not, we can certainly provide that. Um, yeah, thank but for the, the, yeah. Um, okay. And then Sophie, your question was, what is IDTT? So IDTT stands for InDesign Tag Text. It's essentially a text file with, um, styles defined in it. I can show you what it looks like. Although, yeah, we have a couple minutes. Um, yeah, I think we're going to start wrapping up in about five minutes. So I'll, I'll show you an example of what IDTT looks like. But if there's any questions for before, uh, before we depart, then, you know, please start formulating them and we'll, we'll try to save everything after this for, um, for questions. But um, in the meantime, while we're going through this, this is basically the document that you would provide a typesetter or a designer with. Uh, it has a text file um, ending, but you'll see it looks a little bit different than an actual text file. Uh, it has InDesign specific opening and closing tags. We don't often touch this type of file. Like it's not often that you would work in an IDTT unless you're doing like really complicated Bible stuff that we sometimes handle. But for the most part, it's just like the input document for the typesetter. So we can see this has lines defined with our particular styles. It has um, special characters in it. Um, like I mentioned before, we always build little um, helpful things into our IETT files. So you can kind of see here the hyphen. This right here would be like a break character. So that's the word, if it were to break, would break on the correct side of the hyphen. Um, but really all IDTT is, is a typesetting input document. Does that, uh, does that help? Okay. Yes, that helps, thank you. Good, okay. Um, um, but so those are, that, that's a real quick brief overview of the hub. We're gonna use it a lot in our training. Um, so just know that you would create different records. We always say different records for different projects. Um, you know, so if you're working on a particular book, you would do it in one record. Um, that allows you to upload different files, sort of set them, review them, get information, and then convert them from certain formats to other certain formats. Um, I think with the, with the amount of time we have at this point, that is, that's all we're going to show for the, for the hub. Um, we'll get a look at why you might choose different settings versus others when we go into the specific steps in the process. But for now, I think we'll just take our last couple of minutes and open it up to any questions that you guys have.